Strict encoding and decoding are widely used in encryption problems. Well, sometimes they make up good programming problems as well. I am talking about the problem decode string on lead code. A big hint to solve this problem is to use the stack data structure. Let us see how we can go about doing that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see how you can logically approach this problem and what are its limitations. Going forward, we will try to find an optimal solution to the problem and then we will look at the pseudo code of this problem so that you understand how all of this actually works. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. You are given an encoded string and you have to return me its decoded version, right? Now, there are certain rules about how this string is actually encoded. So, for example, I would have a number k outside and inside the bracket, I would have my encoded string. When this opens up, your output will be the encoded string and that will be repeated a k number of times. That means if I have the number 2 outside and in my brackets, I have bc, then the decoded string would be bc bc. So on that logic, this encoding and decoding is working. So for our first test case, I have this string, right? So when I apply this formula, first of all, I see 3a. So that will expand as a, a, a. And then I have b, c and a number 2 outside, correct? So this will expand as b, c, b, c. So for test case number 1, this string will be your answer. Now, surely, since there are brackets, you can have brackets inside of bracket, right? And that is shown in our test case number two. You have an outside bracket and you have an inside bracket. So to solve this, what we're going to do is we will first solve the inner bracket. So I get three and then A, so I get two C's. And this time I will solve the outer bracket. So I will repeat this inner string three times. So I get A, C, C, a total of three times. So for a test case number two, this string will be ultimately your answer. Now, if you have understood the problem statement correctly, feel free to try it out once more on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Okay, so let us try to first generalize how you can solve this problem, how you can approach it in a most logical way. So let us say I have this string with me. This is pretty generic, right? It has so many brackets and you even have nested brackets, correct? For a very difficult test case, you could have a lot of nested brackets, right? So first of all, you need to define a particular way in which you are expecting to solve the problem, right? So when I have to solve problems or mathematical expressions that involve brackets, what is the first thing that you do? You do not solve the outer brackets first, right? What you will do is you will try to find out where you have the innermost brackets, right? So in this expression, my innermost bracket is this, right? So this should be the first string that you are decoding, right? So how do we do that? First of all, I know that, okay, this is my string. And how many times do I have to repeat it? What is the value of k? The value of k is 2, right? So this means you have to repeat this string two number of times, correct? As soon as you decode this, you will get a new string, right? Once again, what you're going to do is you will look at the innermost bracket, right? When you look at this bracket, you will apply the same principle. First of all, identify the string. This is the string, right? CXX. And how many times do you have to repeat it? You have to repeat it a total of three times, correct? So as soon as you decode this, you get a new string. Now look closely. This y was getting carried over, right? And now this y has become a part of your innermost string, right? So this time, this entire string will be my string that I have to work upon and the value of k will be 2. So what I'm going to do is I will repeat this entire string two times. As soon as I do it, I get my final decoded string as the output. So for this particular case, this string will be your answer.
Now, if you try to approach the problem in the same way that you are thinking it, so what you're going to do, you will first iterate through the string, find the innermost bracket and then find the expression. Then you're going to replace the string to find a new string. Once again, you will traverse the string, find the innermost bracket, and then you will try to replace the string with a new string, right? So this is taking up a lot of time. And if your string is very large, you will spend a lot of time just iterating through the string again and again. So definitely, we need to find an optimal solution over here. What can we do about it? Let us take up our sample string once again, right? And when we were approaching this problem logically, how did we know which bracket is the innermost bracket? You are starting to read the string from the beginning, right? So you see three brackets. But how do you know which one is the innermost bracket? The approach that we do in our mind is we keep on traversing the string and then as soon as we see a closing bracket, we will go back, right? And we will go back to find the first opening bracket that we saw, right? So this is how I know that this will be my innermost string and that is the one I have to solve first, correct? Think about it. Even when you're reading some piece of code, so when you're reading this code, how do you know which is the innermost block? So you keep on reading through your code and then as soon as you see a closing bracket, how do you identify what code block is contained in this bracket? You will go back and try to find the first opening bracket. So now you know that this code block lies in one logic, right? So this should give you some kind of a hint, right? You are traversing a string and then you want to go back and look at which elements that you encounter, right? That tells you that a stack data structure can be really handy because in a stack, what you can do is you can keep elements on top of each other. And when you have to go back, you can start popping out elements to look back at the previous element that you saw, right? So let us try to create a stack in which we will store all of our elements, right? But at the same time, you know that you have to multiply some numbers, right? So what I'm going to do is I will create two stacks. One of the stack will store all of the integers and one of the stack will store all the rest of the elements that I have. And what we're going to do is we will start traversing this string from the beginning. As soon as I start, I get a number, right? So this number will go into my number stack and I will put this number two in my stack over here. Moving on, I get an opening parenthesis, correct? I will put this into my string stack. Next, I get a character again. So just put it into the string stack. Next, I see a number. So put it into the number stack. I have an opening parenthesis again. Put it into the string stack. Keep on moving now. I get C. So I will put C into my string stack. Then I get the number 2. So I will put 2 into my number stack. Then I get an opening bracket. So I will put this opening bracket in my string stack. Then I get a X. So I will again put this X into my string stack. And now as soon as you move ahead, you get a closing bracket. This is where things get interesting. When you are approaching this problem, as soon as you got a closing bracket, you had to identify that, okay, now I know my innermost bracket, right? So you have to solve for something. So what can we do? We can look into our string stack now because this is storing all the elements in a reverse order, right? So what I'm going to do is I will keep on popping elements from the stack until I get an opening parenthesis because this opening parenthesis is defining the inner block, right? So what is the character that I get? I get the character X, right? So I'm just going to take this character and pop it out of my stack and then I see a opening bracket. So I will remove this from my stack. Once I got my character, now I need to know how many times do I have to repeat it. So I look in my number stack and I get two. This means I have to repeat this character two times. So what I'm going to do is I will repeat this character two times. And now since I have solved this innermost bracket, what I will do is I will take this character back and put it into my stack once again, right? You will eventually understand what is happening. Move ahead now you see a closing bracket again, right? This means we have to calculate things again. I will take up elements from the stack. I take out XX. Then I take the next element that is C. And then I see an opening bracket, right? So as soon as I see opening bracket, I would remove it. 
so now i know that i have to work upon this string and how many times do i have to repeat it so pop your number stack so this tells me i have to repeat it three times cool so as soon as this is repeated three times you have solved it and you are gonna put it back into your stack right now move ahead again i get the character y right so y will go into my string stack move ahead again i get my closing parentheses closing parentheses means that you have to solve right so what you are going to do so try doing this as an exercise now what you will do is you will remove all of these elements pop out the opening parentheses get the number of times you have to repeat it and then simply repeat it so you see we have traversed our entire string and we got a final output so for this case this string will be your eventual output now let us quickly look at the pseudo code and see how all of this actually works in action on the left side of your screen you have the pseudo code to implement this solution and on the right i have a sample string which we will try to iterate through right oh and by the way if you want the complete code and its test cases you can find the link in the description below to my github profile so let us start with our pseudo code what is the first thing that we do first of all we create a number stack and we create a string stack so this number stack is going to store all of my numbers that i encounter and this string stack will store all of the other strings that i get right now i iterate through the string in this loop what do we do first of all if we get a number just push this number in your number stack so as soon as i get a number 3 what i'm going to just do is i will push this number 3 in my stack over here now you move ahead what do you do if you get anything other than a closing bracket we were pushing all of that in our string stack right so what will happen is the opening bracket will go in our string stack then i will get a in here next i get the element 2 so 2 will get into your number stack you get a opening bracket again so this opening bracket goes in your string stack then you get a c and then ultimately you are at a closing bracket right as soon as you get a closing bracket what do you do you start popping from the string stack until you get a opening bracket right so what this will do is it will pop this element c out and then it sees a opening bracket right so this opening bracket will be removed from the stack and then i get the number c and how many times do you have to repeat it you pop a number from the number stack and then you will repeat this string two number of times correct so i get a cc once you have repeated this just push this repeated string back in your string stack so this cc will go back in your string stack right this is how the loop will continue on and it will iterate through each of the character right once it is completed what you're going to do is you will go through your string stack again and you will create the final output string the time complexity of this solution is order of n that is because we are only iterating through the string once and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n that is because you are using up stack spaces to store all of your intermediate strings i hope i was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you as per my final thoughts i just want to say that whenever you see problems around brackets stack data structure is your best friend that is because a stack not only maintains the order in which your elements are appearing but it also allows you to use the latest element that you just got so think about that all of the mathematical problems which have parentheses all of them can be solved using the stack data structure which other problems did you find where you could use this stack data structure so handy what problems did you face did you have any concerns with the solutions that i just offered you tell me everything in the comment section below and i would love to discuss all of them with you you would be also glad to know that a text explanation to this problem is also available on the website studyalgorithms.com a pretty handy website to help you out with your programming needs you can find the link in the description below as a reminder if you found this video helpful please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends this motivates me to make more and more such videos where i can simplify programming for you also let me know what do you want to learn next i'll be glad to help you out until then see ya